Structure chart example, online shopping system. The following structure chart outlines the movement of data, processes and parameters related to using an online shopping service such as Amazon, eBay or a more traditional source such as Big W which has developed an online presence. So try to reflect on your own experiences as we go through this structure chart and see if the logic makes sense to you. Now the first step in this system as with most systems is we've got to log in. And this is incredibly important with an online shopping system because in many cases, our accounts are linked to financial data. And with online shopping, it's a variable how much money I'm going to be spending depending on how much products I'm be buying. So it could be $10, but it could also be thousands of dollars depending on how many products I'm buying. So it's very important these systems are protected. So we need to go through the login process, enter my login details, get verification, and obviously the system will not go ahead unless my login is okay. Hence why we've got the control parameter there. All right, so my system's protected. Uh, I mean, I've got to make sure I get my login password okay for the system to proceed. Once everything is okay, my login details are correct, I can then get into the main system with my account information, all right, and then it'll load up my personalized user home screen, okay, which might have things on it based on my user preferences. Now, it's also important from here too, if I've finished for the day and I've finished my online shopping, that I log out of the system, okay? Because as said, I've got to keep my data protected. I don't want anyone else coming into my system and buying things without my knowledge, spending my money, which my account is linked to. From here at the user home, I can then search for products that I might want to buy. So there's two methods of doing that. I can manually search or I could just browse. As said, there's preferences usually through my user home and go through different menus to find products. So if I am going browse products, it's just page navigation that's going to lead me through the different products available on the online service or I can manually search a product through entering in a search criteria. From here also, I can go back to the user home, but essentially through both these pathways of searching and browsing, I'm gonna find products, and then I'm gonna click on those products and see their product details. Now, when I see these product details, okay, I can look at the product. Now, at first, if I decide it's not really for me and I wanna look at more products, well, I'm just gonna click return, and it's gonna take me back to wherever I came from, either to the browse interface or the search interface, so I can continue browsing. But if I do like the product, okay, the product can then be sent into my shopping cart. All right, and that's where kind of a storage location is for products I'm intending to buy. Now, as I said, I said products, which means I usually do this for a number of products before I actually buy the products themselves. So this step here involves repetition because many products are going to be sent to my shopping cart before I actually pay for them. All right, and so that's where everything's going to be sent to through all my browsing and searching when I do intend to buy a product. From here then, I can then get all the products in my shopping cart and we can put them into a payment interface so that I can buy everything in my shopping cart from here. So this is where everything goes when I'm ready to pay for it. When I am ready to pay for it then, I've got to then get send my payment information to the system, okay, in order to process the transaction. This might involve communication with my bank, okay, through uh, some sort of e-commerce setup through internet banking, all right, and then obviously, that information needs to be correct and the system needs to approve, in the, approve the actual transaction before the system can commence once again. So in, in order for the payment to be recorded and to be okay. So that needs to be approved through that communication with potentially my bank in this situation. Once that approval has taken place, the payment is all good. A confirmation can be then set up and generated receipt, which is sent to the user, it can be displayed on screen or go to their email, but it will have all the transaction information on it, identifying when the actual transaction took place, how much money I paid for it, and what products were paid for in the transaction. So I hope this video has given you understanding of how a structure chart can be used to represent an online shopping system. We've got pretty much all the symbols in act here. You can see I've got control parameters for approval when logging in and when a transaction has been okay when buying the actual products. You can see I've got decisions with how I am actually searching for products. Here you can see repetition takes place when adding products to my shopping cart in that I usually add multiple products to my shopping cart before I actually pay for them there. And you can see the general flow of data along the call lines, linking all my processes together.